What is going on everyone? Before we get into today's video, I want to give a big shout out to A1 Comics for A1 Wednesday. Don't forget to follow them on Instagram. Their link is in the description below. They have live sales every Wednesday and Friday on the IG. Don't forget to check them out on Twitch every Thursday as well. And of course, they are on the WhatNot app. What is going on everyone? Chris with Journals, Comics, and Pop Culture bringing you a video today discussing this last weekend's controversy at New York Comic Con surrounding artist Peach Momoko. Now, many of you are probably already aware of what happened. We'll kind of preface a little bit of that. But this video's purpose is for me to really dive into my personal opinions on what I think, the, the, the picture that this incident painted and what it means for the larger macro look of the comic book industry right now and i think there's definitely some really really important takeaways that we should take away from this but of course before we get into it if you aren't subscribed to the channel please take some time to do so and then again a1 wednesday check them out their links are below big live sale tonight so uh folks again to preface peach momoko had a booth at new york comic con she was offering signatures for free. She was doing free signs, which I think is absolutely amazing. She was offering 10 signatures for each individual free. She was selling remarks for like super cheap too. I think it was like 10 or 20, somewhere around there. And uh, there was some drama that went on. And uh, this is an article from Bleeding Cool that we are going to use just to kind of revisit what happened and we're going to start with this paragraph right here where they state uh, it didn't all go well bleeding cool is aware that a number of fellow exhibitors vendors collectors in the long it was like one of the longest lines uh when they all started fighting over placement and returning to the line to the degree that peach momoko who was signing for free and charging for remarks of her existing comics she had to leave her table over fears for her safety unbelievable unbelievable and she did uh come out with it with the public statement uh she basically apologized to fans she felt that she really let the fans down she said i have to do better next time i'm gonna learn and we're gonna do this that and this um this was friday this was a whole weekend event i know she ended up doing a signing at uh, midtown on saturday to kind of make up for her you know stepping out of the rest of of comic con but this is what I want to point out. First and foremost, let's look at the facts. She was offering 10 free signatures to anybody in line, right? Now, what started transpiring was the exhibitors, folks with the exhibitors bags, badges. So you had people that were actually working the con, working the floors of the con. Other vendors, <laughs> you know, that were saying, well, hey, I'm, I'm going to get in line and, and I'm going to get some of these books. And there's no doubt you know, there's no doubt that a lot of these individuals were doing this so they could probably get 10 signatures, go back to their booths and flip them for 100, 200 bucks, whatever the case may be. There's just no doubt in my mind. Now, was everyone doing this or do I know names? Can't say that, but nobody could tell me otherwise that this wasn't the intent of at least some individuals. All right. Now, for the fact that People are fighting over the line and all this. I mean, this this goes to show the mentality of something that goes bigger than the comic book industry and the comic book hobby, right? Uh, I, I'm going to look at some of these tweets that they said right here uh, in the Bleeding Cool article. We have a tweet saying that this individual experience, I've never been so disgusted with the behavior of the exhibitors at New York Comic Con. It wasn't even 10 a.m. and there was almost a fight in front of Peach. Uh, she had every right to cancel because it was super st stressful for no reason. Wow. Uh, Sinclair Norton stated, uh, Peach was doing free signings of up to 10 books. If you had more than 10, you were allowed to have those signed and get back in line. Ooh, okay, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Taking advantage of this, there was a staggering line of resellers carrying stacks of books repeatedly lining up. Wow. She posted and asked for influencers and distributors to please not do this. This was something she wanted to do to get back to her fans. But greed makes people deaf and crass, unfortunately. It was an absolute mob scene and they overwhelmed her. What they did to Peach Momoko at NYCC is disgusting. 
Other artists hang at their booths for an hour or so a day, charging for signatures. She tried to spend the entire time doing something nice for fans, free of charge. Influencer stores, this wasn't for you. It was for us. All right. I, I think this is the big, a big takeaway here. So again, we add more context of individuals going up with their 10 books, getting them signed, going back in line with 10 more books. So I want to talk about the state of the industry. And then I want to talk about what we can learn from this and how we can, how we can do this better next time around. I definitely believe this is all about greed. Okay. This is very disheartening and shows that there is an element in the comic book hobby right now that doesn't care about the love of the hobby. It cares about the money in their pockets. Now, I'm not going, you know, I'm not generalizing. I'm not going to sit here and put people in boxes and say it's it's influencers, it's resellers. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to sit and point a finger at some bo pretty boxed up with a bow on it. There's just people out there in general that are greedy and that's all they focus on. Now I'm going to play a bit of devil's advocate and say, this isn't just resellers like, or, you know, vendors at the con that were doing this. I guarantee it. I'm going to ask you all this, or actually I'm not even going to ask. I'm going to tell you all this. I guarantee you that there were average, you know, uh, spectators, you know, that, that average collectors or whatever, the people that paid for tickets, like the average, you know, Comic-Con attendee that went and was buying back issues and paying for autographs or just hanging out, whatever, that went and stood in this line and had, even if they just had 10 books, they had the intent of selling at least some of those books and flipping them for money in their pocket. Guarantee it. There's no doubt in my mind that that was there too. That needs to be brought to attention here as well. So you got an element of people wanting to take advantage of a situation where greed gets in the way and then you get people acting out. And I will say, and again, I wasn't there. I would love to hear more people's testimonies that were there, but I can definitely see more of these resellers that at least were there that were going back in line and that causing an issue. So I'm going to assume maybe there were some people that were just there with their 10 books and they saw these people getting back in line with, with another stack of books and they were probably getting frustrated saying, you can't get back in line. You know, we've been waiting for hours or what about, et cetera, et cetera. People start butting heads. There's a huge issue. Now, again, I don't have all the details. I'm just, I'm speculating on how these, uh, eruptions and fights could have started, right? So let's look at how moving forward we can avoid this in the future. Now, especially Peach Momoko doing something out of the kindness of her heart for her, for her fans. This is what I would do first and foremost. One, 10 is too much. 10 is too much. And two, you get your limit, you can't get back in line. Period. Nope. Nope. I would allow three books. Maybe even five, but then it stops there. What does this do? It allows somebody that is there to be able to get a copy for themselves, to get a copy for their son or family member that couldn't make it or friend that couldn't make it. And that's it. And that is it. And hey, if they're only getting it there for them, hey, maybe one somebody could still post one on eBay and try to make a little money off of it. That's why I like three. Three to me is like the number. You cannot get back in line. That right there, huge, huge red flag. Huge red flag. I also think there's room to possibly treat anybody with an exhibitor's badge differently. Now, I don't want to say, I don't want to like blackball them from the opportunity because a lot of people working the show are collectors to some extent as well. And hey, maybe it's their only opportunity to 
see Peach and, and, and if they're fans of Peach, they can get an autograph. But I think there should be possibly a time limit. Not, not a time limit, but a beginning time where you can't get in that line with an exhibitor's badge until noon or something like that. So that way you see you have a good few hours where everybody that wants remember this is a huge huge line so it's going to take time for them to get through it. So you give the fans that are there at least a good few hours to not have extra people getting in line that are working the show and they could get in line noon after. Or if Peach wanted to show up or if somebody signing books wanted to show up Maybe even, you know, they, they show up like an hour early, they get set up. And if they are set up before the doors open, then you can allow some of the exhibitors to come and stand in their own line before it opens. But as soon as it opens, they got to anybody that, that didn't get signed, they got to leave and then come back when the when the actual line starts forming up again. And again, same rules, though, if they stand in line before it opens. You still get the same amount of books and you cannot come back. You get your two, three, whatever books and you're done. You can't come back. And I think if, if we adhere to these strict guidelines, it's going to help things like this not happen. Because remember, Peach did this for the fans. And I'm sorry, if you're truly a fan, there's no reason you need to go get 10 autographs. I look at it like this for anybody that's a sports fan. If you used to go, I know it's probably tougher nowadays. I remember going to Candlestick Park, the San Francisco Giants Stadium, right? And I remember, you know, even if we sat up, you know, at the upper deck, we could go down to the, you know, lower deck, field level, and we could go walk up to the dugout area. And, you know, there's kids there and we're all lining up and we got balls or baseball cards. And, Sometimes they would actually have lines for certain individuals that wanted to sign. But other times you just go stand up there, right? And you put your hand out and you wait for a player to come and, and sign your ball or sign your card or et cetera, et cetera. Can you imagine, can you imagine going up there having like five balls and they get to you and you're like, here's my ball. And then they sign and like, okay, here's the second ball. Can you sign? Here's the third ball. Here's the fourth ball. No. You, you, you first off, you're putting your hand out there with that ball, and you you're lucky if they even grab it from you. And if they do, when you get that one autograph, you are done. You are ecstatic. That's it. It's good. Now, if another player comes around, maybe you can wait for them and get a signature from them. Yeah, but that was it. I remember getting you know auto autographs by bench players and bullpen pitchers. They didn't even have to be all-stars or Barry Bonds's. I didn't care because I had a signature from somebody. They gave it to me for free. They took the time. This is somebody that I, I watch on the field that represents my team. Can you, I mean, I, I just can't fathom any true fan of, of an artist or a writer or somebody in comic books going up and actually feeling like they are entitled to getting 10 books signed. Come on. We got to eliminate that. A true fan, like I said, allow two, three, maybe four for people that, friends that couldn't make it. You get one book, you're good. As a John Romita Jr., as a John Romita Sr. fan, if I had one book signed by him, it would be a grail of mine. I would keep it. I would frame it and I would throw it up on my wall and that's where it would stay. And that's all I would need. Same with Peach. I like Peach. One autograph, throw it up on my wall. So that's my thoughts, folks. I would love to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments below. Um, if anybody was there and has a firsthand experience, love to hear what you guys have to think, have to say. But again, like Peach, this is, this is the blessing. And I'm on, you know, any any collector out there that even, you know, partakes in flipping or, you know, looks at the situation and, and wants to take advantage of it to, to make money. Look, she set a limit. And if you went and stood in line to get 10 and you want to go flip a few, that's fine. But for those that took advantage of the situation, 
And we're in the middle of all that where the, the energy just started becoming toxic. You have to look in the mirror and, and ask yourself, what are you here for? And you got to ask yourself, whether you had ill intent or not, you got to ask yourself, how can I see the shortcomings of my own actions or how can I better myself in my actions within this hobby? How can I hold myself accountable moving forward? Because what's going to happen is these artists like Peach, they're not going to want to do this ever again. And it's going to take so much of that, that good, positive, heartful element that still exists in this hobby, it's going to take it away. It's going to push it away. Those are my two cents. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, if you are subscribed to the channel, please take some time to do so. Be well, and until next time.